Without getting into buzzwords, why we should lower the voting age. Equality, equity, accountability, fairness. As a 16 year old, I know I'm prepared to vote. I'm ready. It's so convenient to just write us off. There is social science behind what we want to do. If we have younger people being able to vote and more younger people voting in general, the political parties actually have to look at us and then have to make policies to make sure that we will vote for them. I fall into a lot of my political opinions and thoughts and ideas, mainly through the internet, honestly, um, and through social media, learning about the issues going on around the world. I had a period of time where I was really into waste. And then further on to that, I've known about climate change for quite a while. And then you learn more about how governments have known about this for 30 years and still done nothing on it. Make It 16 is a group of people who all fundamentally believe that we should lower the voting age here in New Zealand. I'm originally from Porirua. Grew up in a political state at home, quite a low income start. I saw growing up not only a poverty of wealth, but also a poverty of caring from central government. By the time that I'm an intermediate, I'm already seeing people considering dropping out to work in order to support their families. And that's tragic and that's a stain on democracy in this country. There shouldn't be taxation without representation. A lot of the young kids particularly who are working and paying a tax, they're the ones who don't get to choose where their money goes and they would be the ones to best benefit from having a say in where that money goes. I think there's this idea that a lot of kids want to vote for selfish reasons. They want like a student UBI I think a lot of kids just want their parents to not be poor. The primary aim of the Make It 16 campaign is to lower the voting age, but it encompasses so much more than that. Make It 16 is about strengthening New Zealand's democracy. There are lots of different types of governments, but democracy is when the people in the society and the population of the country have a say as opposed to just a powerful or wealthy section of it, like a dictatorship, or a monarch, a king or queen making all the decisions. Direct democracy would have everyone voting on every decision. In New Zealand, where we have a representative democracy, we're able to vote for people to represent us in Parliament, and those are the people with the power to make the decisions. It's important to have a lot of people's voices in the mix because that's what democracy is. It really is that simple. The more people you have able to contribute, the stronger your democracy is. I grew up in a very politically charged household, which comes with its positives and negatives. Um, <laughs> We've had a lot of open conversations about politics in my house, especially in my last few years of high school. One of the biggest things in my home, like our biggest motto is go big or go home. Um, and I decided to go big. If I want to see a change, I've got to be a part of it. I was diagnosed with depression back in 2017. So mental health is a really big thing for me because I feel like had the adequate funding been there, had the adequate support been there, I feel like I would be in a very different place right now. What to do? <laughs> Some parties are going to do things differently with those issues than other parties. So voting for me personally is like my way of being the change that I need. I'm in year 12 now, so starting to think about what I want to do with my career and my future, so quite a big year for me. There are all these views that 16 year olds are immature, they don't know what they're doing with their lives, and then they go, but you're mature. 
okay, well, if you're saying I'm fine to vote, why can't other people who are just like me can vote? There are immature 18 year olds. There are people who are in their 50s who are still immature. It's a term that doesn't just relate to age. When is it my turn? <laughs> 16 year olds can do so much already. They can get a driver's license, they can get a firearms license even, and carry weapons. I could have left school, I could have gotten married, I could even consent to medical procedures, sexual intercourse, that kind of thing. But I can't vote because I'm too immature for that. Why? Why can't I do that? After two years working and living in the halls at Victoria University, I'm currently back at home in Nio just to save money because rent's so expensive right now. Absolutely terrified of not being able to own a house and having to pay you know, massive amounts of rent for the rest of my life. Shelter is a fundamental human right and um, I think it's a bit crazy that it's now something that's so unattainable for a lot of people. Do we still have that? Yes. It hits home quite hard when you see young kids and you think, oh, what if the housing prices keep on going up? In terms of the groups or organisations I could be a part of, I think this one has potential to make long-lasting, important change for the lives of all people. If I'm honest, currently we don't have the most support that we would want. Uh, in terms of agreeing with the voting age to be should be lowered, there's been some like polls. I think one had like 8% yes. So yeah, it's definitely not a lot of the public. A lot of reasons people present in opposition to lowering the voting age come from a preconceived notion of what age even means and what age has in terms of relevance to how you perceive the world. I think this whole argument of, oh, they don't have any life experiences. What? Everyone has different experiences and the purpose of democracy is to bring all those experiences into account. That's why it works. In 2020, we realised that this is the perfect opportunity to build up our campaign. There was a general election coming up in New Zealand and we thought that actually this is the perfect time to bring this to the front of the public's minds but also to the political agenda of parties who are running. I saw the campaign launch in the media and it's something that I've always had in mind as a really significant issue. We're relying on these young people to be the antagonists for change. Some lawyers came forward and said, this could be a potential court case. we found in the Bill of Rights, I think it's section 12 and section 19, could have a potential clash. So in New Zealand, we have the Bill of Rights Act, explaining all of the rights that we have as New Zealanders. Some of these things are like freedom from torture, the right to have freedom of expression, our right to peacefully protest. One of those rights that we have in there is our right to vote. But this is the only one of all of the rights which has an age on it, and that age is 18. So one section says that once you're 16, you can't be discriminated on based on your age. And then the other section says that once you're 18, you have the right to vote. This is the first time that an application like this has been made directly to the court. And this isn't just a good thing for young people, this is a good thing for New Zealand as a whole. Right now we're talking about lowering the voting age to 16, but let's go back to the first election in the mid 1800s. The voting base was so much smaller. You had to be male. You had to be 21 years or over. You had to be a British subject. You had to have a certain level of land holdings. And you couldn't have any sort of criminal conviction. I think it is valuable to look back on how things were so that we know that there is room to change. Voting in New Zealand is quite complicated. It's changed a lot over time for a lot of different reasons. We have got it out of order in the past. In 1862, which is far before a woman, we had gold miners be allowed to vote. In 1867, Māori electorates were introduced. One of the biggest ones was allowing women to vote. That was a long, hard struggle, as we all know. 
prisoner voting rights have bounced back and forth between some being able to vote, none of them being able to vote, but it's really changed a lot over the years. In 1969, the voting age was lowered from 21 to 20, and then in 1974 to 18. This was around the time lots of young people were protesting against the Vietnam War. Many people were like, well, we're being sent off to war, we want to have our voice heard about this. And I think that's really relevant to today with climate change. We are the people going into this future, so we should be able to vote to help us address this climate change issue. Some 16-year-olds are so determined to gain the right to vote, they're about to take a case to the High Court. Make it 16, a youth-led campaign will have... The court hearing happened August 2020. I would never have expected myself a year ago to be in a courtroom <laughs> fighting to lower the voting age. Our side had some really strong arguments backed by evidence and that kind of thing, and we had our affidavits all supporting us. In terms of the arguments, because they were really directly related to different clauses in our Bill of Rights Amendment, it was just a simple phrasing of word that can make a difference between whether the judge leaned towards the Crown or to our campaign. Yes, it definitely is. I mean, I really want to vote and I'm here to show it. Like, I'm ready to vote as a 16 year old. This is what matters. A really important asset that came from our court case was actually the opportunity to talk to media, to bring it into kind of public's eyes. You know, some dinner tables will have, be having this discussion tonight and that'll be quite cool. Kia ora team, uh, Lily here again, we uh, chill out outside. I felt very hopeful, especially after listening to the Crown arguments. I was like, yeah, we've got this in the bag. This will be great. When they were like, oh, well, the rest of the world has it at 18, so why should it matter? And then we came back and were like, if Actually, that was the case, then a woman, woman wouldn't have the right to yeah. vote at this stage. Particularly when you want to say that New Zealand um, has a really strong democracy and can lead the world in lots yeah, of different issues. We, we like to pride ourselves on that. Like, yeah. Look at us, a strong democracy. Yeah. We're the first to allow women to vote. So, yeah. like, at this point, I don't think there's any excuse not to do it. What the judge said at the end was that she'd have to have a long think about this. I think was quite good for Make It 16 because it really showed that she thought that both sides had quite valid arguments. The teenagers are hoping that if successful, then 16 and 17 year olds will be able to vote in 2022's local election. We can look to other countries around the world which have lowered their voting age. Like Austria, who has had it since 2010, but then there's also countries like Scotland, Wales and many other countries. So New Zealand definitely wouldn't be the first. Make It 16 is part of a children's voting colloquium that meets monthly. We've got a network of people who are all working towards the same goal. There's also a growing movement across Canada, so out in British Columbia, for example, the Vote 16 group is quite strong. It's really great to have international examples to point to when you say extending the voting age to 16 is a good idea. We've got a little group together now who are going to be taking this um, further, particularly working with Wales and Scotland who have already lowered the voting age from 18 to 16. And hopefully abolishing the voting age actually, not even just lowering it, abolishing it. <laughs> Scotland extended their voting age to 16 and initially it wasn't a very popular public idea but they thought in our independence referendum the people who are going to be quite impacted are those younger generations and therefore we should let them have a say as well. They had over 80% of people who were under 18 voting and I think that just shows that a lot of people will vote when they get the opportunity to. I like to believe there's a bit of a domino effect as more and more countries get more and more democratic. We see that continue on and on. Initially, the 2020 general election in New Zealand was going to be held on September 19th, um, and my 18th birthday was September 27th, so just about eight days after the general election was when I would have been eligible to vote.
in New Zealand, they decided to delay the election till October 17th, uh, meaning that myself and about 1,500 other young people in New Zealand were able to vote. Thank you very much. Now, as we recover from COVID-19, I really want to see politicians who have my interests as a young person at heart. And so that's why I'll be voting and what I'll be voting for. Eventually one day, the High Court had posted a tweet about the decision that we had um, received for the court case. We were like, oh, judgment's coming today, guys. Judgment's coming. We get the email. It's like, whoa, judgment's coming. Oh my gosh, what is it going to say? Is it going to say we won? We didn't. The Crown took the case. Um, no, it was pretty disappointing, actually. Um, hi, hi, Sophie. Welcome back. Hi, Sophie. Um, well, I think it was really close, in my opinion, and we all agreed on that when we got the result. Didn't necessarily say that a voting age of 16 would be bad in any way. All they said was that actually to pick between 16 and 18 isn't the court's job. It's too difficult a policy discussion and issue for the court to determine and there hasn't been enough discussion of it yet. That was disappointing. We thought there, were, there was a lot of unanswered questions that we could take further and this isn't the end of our fight. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's good Have to hear. Been, uh... Now we're actually going to take the case to the Court of Appeal, the next court up. We're trying to get the Declaration of Inconsistency, but in a sense we're also trying to convince the Court of Appeal that the High Court judge got something wrong. Yeah. Um, we don't have to prove it's unjustified. They have to prove it's justified. Yeah. They didn't even bring any evidence. and that's. Yeah. We're going back for round two and hopefully we win this time. You're fighting for the votes of people maybe who even aren't even at school yet, you know, and people who are four years old now, who in 10 or 12 years time, they might be able to vote. This is going to be probably a long and slow process, especially when we look at the campaigns to lower the voting age in other countries, but also when we look at the campaigns for women's right to vote and for other people's right to vote as well. This is a change that's going to have lifetime impacts based on the evidence that the earlier you vote, the more likely you are to vote throughout the rest of your life. And I think all parties have a common value of democracy, at least the major ones do. So, you know, this is all something that we should be looking towards and sort of not allowing short term worries to get in the way. We need to keep democracy strong, as we've seen what happens in other countries that don't have strong democracies. Internationally, democracy is being threatened every day. Social media allows for so many conspiracy theories and fake news to spread like wildfire. It's almost ironic that the democratisation of the internet is weakening the validity of our democracies off the internet. I think people can get quite comfortable and think that, you know, we will always stay in a stable democracy and New Zealand is a strong nation. But if you look at what has happened in the United States, which is almost held as the pillar of, you know, the founding democracy, and you see the riots on the Capitol and you see the fact that the Russians have been found to meddle in the elections. We really have to fight to protect our democracy. It isn't a given. It's overwhelmingly beneficial to democracy to lower the voting age. Everything that I read and everything that I'm interested in, it gives me the belief that things do change and that things will change. We just need to be willing to change them. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.